Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to answer a question that has to do with finding the source of broadband interference. This is not an easy one because although there are many tricks for doing so, there's no Oh, step by step guide that will lead you definitely to where these uh, sources of uh, interference are. Um, <clears throat> this particular case comes from Eowyn Rusan, uh, who is, did he give his call sign in this one? He is in Eastern Europe. Um, he says, What antenna do you suggest for QRM hunting? Um, he says, I have a lot of sporadic QRM. It's not in my apartment building. I cut the power for the entire building, but I don't know exactly from where. QRM is in the region from 30 meters to 10 meters, or in other words, from 10 megahertz up to um, 28 megahertz, 29.7. Okay. For example, the noise level with amp 1 on 20 meters, normally I have S1 noise floor. With QRM, I have S9 plus 10 dB. Without amp 1, I have S9 noise level. You can see the picture, and we will look at it. I'm planning to hunt the QRM with my KX3 and my tiny SA, a small portable spectrum analyzer, but I need a directional antenna as directional as possible. Thanks, and best 73 from Yankee Oscar 2 land. Okay, uh, I'm going to just kind of come in on this picture. We're not going to be able to see it perfectly. But what we've got here is the band, and the noise, this is noise right here, up to this point. This is the height of the noise. The only signals that break through the noise are these right here. So there's a tremendous amount of very broadband noise. Now, let me say just a, a couple things about uh, broadband noise. Um, if the noise has any underlying pulsing or... Um, what would you call it, periodicity to it at all, the noise will not look like this. It will have some spikes in it, like this. These spikes will be uh, multiples of the uh, noise. Like if, if there were a 50K basic on the thing, you'd see a line every 50K. Okay, so the fact that it's very wide, very broad band, indicates that there is something like a spark. Uh, for example, this could be noise from a motor. Uh, I'm talking about electric motor or something like that. Now the fact that it's above 10 megahertz and goes up to 30 megahertz um, or 30 meters to 10 meters. It's funny that the two swap whether you're in in meters or megahertz. Um, it could be things like grow lights, stuff like that, but you wouldn't normally catch it at that higher frequency without catching it at the lower. But you're looking for an antenna. You're looking for a highly directional antenna. The loop. The reason you want the loop, and you can make a handle down here, and you can wind this multiple times if you want. But the more you wind it, the more it is happier at lower frequencies rather than higher frequencies. You want a 10 megahertz to 29.7 megahertz receiving loop. Okay. And uh, you can get them with little amplifiers in them which can help quite a bit, but it sounds like you've got plenty of noise. Now, here's the secret. The secret. 
This is just looking at it laying on the table, but we're going to pick it up and carry it vertically. Most man-made noise is vertical. Okay, you may have to play games to do this. Let's look straight down. So here's the top of the loop. Okay, here's your head, here's your shoulders, here's your legs, and so on. You're, we're looking right down on your head. Okay, and you've got hold of the loop. The loop has a pattern that looks like this. Okay, now it's not terribly directional, is it? Because if the noise is over here, it's going to be picked up. But these antennas have very sharp nulls. Very sharp. Many, many dB sharp. It's best if you hold this thing up. Now, you're going to run into the problem that um, if you're in, say, a square with buildings over here and so on, the signal's going to kind of bounce all over. So you're going to have to do a lot of walking around and a lot of imagining in your head, well, it's bouncing off of that building or bouncing off of this or so on. But out from the middle of this field, I get a pretty strong null. What you are looking for is the null. Now note that the null is two-sided. Okay, the null is two-sided. And what you want to do is to rotate this and find a null. Now, if you are out in a pasture or something like this, and you've got, you know, a road network and um, some villages and some fields and so on. If you are here and you catch a null that points in this direction, don't forget that the null points in this direction too. Okay, and there might be another village or something. Or if you're in the big city, this is really, really something. So what you need to do is then move to a new location. And you find a null that way and a null that way. You can even move to a third direction and find a null this way and a null that way. And in the area where the nulls overlap is probably where your problem is. At that point, you've got to go in. <laughs> you got to go in to the the territory and see if you can hunt the thing down. Uh, there are attenuators made uh, so that you can put variable amounts of attenuation here to keep the receiver linear. I'm suspecting it's some grow lights or um, a motor that comes on, like for um, refrigeration. Uh, at a you know a bakery who knows whatever um, and you wouldn't think something like that would put out a lot of noise but if you have a generator that has or a um, motor that has brushes it can make very loud noise uh, like that although it would normally be at a lower frequency but that that thing with the null um, will give you a very good idea of where that is coming from. It's, it's going to take some work to figure out. I know that. And I am sorry to hear that. I also live in an area with S1 noise. And um, I'm very fortunate to live out in the country with very few houses around. So I can get uh, very, very good uh, noise figures out here. And it's a blessing because I used to live where there was uh, lots of noise. So there you go. I hope that helps. And let me know. I'm curious what your uh, experience is going to be with this. But you can make that loop like um, get a two foot, two foot, uh, 70 centimeter um, 
uh, knitting loop or something like that and just wind wire around that a few times that's all it takes and put it into your little kx3 and uh, you should have some pretty sharp nulls on that you know try it first and before you go hunting so there you have it if you'd like to help support this channel you may do so by going to decastlercom support and picking away that you find most helpful Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like. Don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73.